You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get your last word. Welcome to the Four Flying Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB Financial. This is October the 9th, a.k.a. Thanksgiving 2017. With you today is myself, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. How was your Thanksgiving? Are you thankful? Um, I'm thankful. Yeah, I'm thankful. <laughs> Don't sound so convinced. Well... I'm going to be distracted a lot this show. I was going to say, about 30 seconds before we started recording the show, Joel was just yelling at his TV. <laughs> so I've got a Yankee playoff game on my television with a Toronto Maple Leaf game on my iPad. Okay, so you you are 100% invested in today's show. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But the Yankees <laughs> are winning. It's 4 nothing. Okay, so good so, good so far. Yeah, so... You'll know how I'm doing, listeners, by the end of the show. Or when you're listening to this, you'll know whether I'm happy or sad right now. Because the Leafs are losing, which I'm not super thrilled about. But it's game three, so, like, they're going to lose games. I'm much, like, I care much more about the Yankee game right now. Because this is, this is it, right? You lose and you're done? Yeah, losing and done. But, and I, I've gone through a love-hate relationship with Chase Headley. Yeah, I think everyone, including Chase Headley, has probably done the, uh, that exact same thing. Yeah, back on hate. Back on oh, Okay, hate. So, so strong yeah. on the hate side. All right. Yeah, yeah. so pretty pretty upset at him. But uh, I'm thankful. Um, it's a weird Thanksgiving for me. Yeah, no, no turkey. No turkey, no family. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my, that's a little weirder. Yeah, like my... So wife and son when visited their fam her family, their family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, their other family that they have. No, nah, her her side of the family. I had to work this weekend and I had a ball tournament, so I stayed home. Uh yeah, the least just scored. <laughs> it's gonna be one go. of those kinds of shows, folks. Uh yeah, so yeah, it's a weird Thanksgiving. So she made me a pie before she left. That's nice. So that was good. So I've had pie. And what kind of pie? Lemon. That's my favorite. Oh, well, that's well, nice that she made. Pie. Today I had apple and pumpkin, which are two of my favorites. But there's no such thing as a bad pie. No, there is. Banana cream? Like, yeah, banana cream. Yeah. I've <laughs> never had coconut cream, but I don't like the sounds of it. If it's anything like banana cream, I'd pass on that too. Yeah, I agree. How about your thanks? How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. Had uh, three dinners, one with friends and family, one with, and then two with family. So it was good. Had uh, turkey at two of them, ham at the other. So that's nice to switch it up. Um, yeah, just lots of lots of good times. Lots of uh, got to watch some sports. Got to watch some baseball, some hockey, which is always a nice uh, a nice way to spend a long weekend with some sports. I was, I was talking to a friend, and he's like, you know, he's like, turkey, he's like, everyone does turkey. He's like, it's so rare that turkey is done, like, really well. Usually it's, like, it's good, but, like, it's really easy to not do well. And so he's like, yeah, he's like, I, I'm done with turkey. He's like, Christmas, Thanksgiving, we do prime rib. Oh, my. Like, that's <laughs> that's what he goes with. Just so like, that, sound, that sounds good. Yeah, that's not a bad way to go. Yeah, so so what he had for dinner tonight, which I was a little sad I didn't get the invite. Um, I w- we would have had to. I was we we're recording today anyway, so I had to turn it down. But but it would have been nice to at least have the thought. Yeah, I've been like, man, I could have had prime rib, but now I can't. And instead, I'm here with you and all my sports games. Should I turn like Monday Night Football on my computer? Yeah, like, what's, what's the worst that could happen? Just have another distraction. Go, who's even, is what, Chicago and someone who's going to beat Chicago? Uh, well, no, not necessarily. Minnesota, which oh. they don't, I don't know if they have a quarterback. I don't, I don't think either of those teams have a quarterback. Uh, and didn't they, didn't Minnesota just lose their running back too? Yeah, they did. I really need, actually, in our fourth line fantasy league, 
I really need the Vikings maybe running back Latavius Murray to go off right now. So, uh, speaking of the four, the the isn't it the fifth line? Fifth line fantasy league. Yeah, I think we called it the fourth line on the internet, just because that's what calling, it was called. I keep on calling it the fifth line for some reason. It's fine. Anyways, Call it whatever you want. Uh, you want to know who lost to the worst team in the league this week? <laughs> Do tell. Ah, uh, tiny. Yeah. Joel finally yeah. got on the board of the W. Finally got a win. My team is bad. Somehow I won. I also played a guy who didn't play because I didn't see that he was out. That's how much That's how much Joel paid attention. Well, he had Big Ben. Five yeah. interceptions. That's not good. Yeah. Anyways, you know what's hilarious? Lots of things. We have spent, I don't know how long, starting this show. It was the first week of hockey, and we haven't even talked about hockey yet. <laughs> we're going like to get into it, because there, there, obviously there are actual games happening this week. Um, but on a, a turkey day, there's lots, lots to ha- happen. It's a busy sports time of the year as well. Like, obviously, you mentioned baseball, football, hockey. Very, very excited that uh, hockey is back. And I think, honestly, this is probably, thinking about this show leading up to it, I think this is possibly my favorite episode to record every season is the first episode after the season starts. Because we get to talk about, like, just the crazy things. You remember the start that Richard Ponick had at the start of last year and everyone was like, is he going to keep it up? Is he going to keep it up? Like obviously Richard Ponick did not keep it up, but we get to look at things like which Kane is going to end the season with the most points because they're currently tied for third in the league in points. Both both Evander and Patrick. So we get to talk about things like that. Um, Will the sixth round pick from the New Jersey devils continue his torrid, Two and a half point in a game pace. Is that going to happen, Joel? Yes. All right. I like that. The um, answer is yes to all of these. Things. Okay. So everything weird and bad will happen. Looking at these sample sizes is always fun. Um, so let's get into that. First, let's remind everyone about the Alberta Podcast Network powered by the fine folks at ATB. Now that hockey's back, if you're playing hockey, if your kids are playing hockey, you are likely, especially in Alberta, you are reminded that ATB is a supporter of local hockey as well as professional hockey in your neighborhood. So they support them and they want to know that they, you, they want you to know that they care. Go over to atb.com slash listens and you can hear and find out all the ways that ATB listens to you and wants to hear. And now for hockey, Joel, the NHL is back. We have actual hockey games to talk about. So let's start with the week that you have had. This is the third game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. And this is the only game that they have not scored thus far. And it could change, obviously. But it's halfway through the game. They only have one goal, which I think could be classified as a scoring drought at this point. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs will not be shy of goals this year. They're going to score a lot of goals. Uh, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty excited about it. Aren't you? Aren't you excited about how many goals they're going to score? I wouldn't say I'm excited about how many they'll score, but I think like I, I was able to watch both of those games uh, against the the Jets on an opening day and then the Rangers game on Saturday. And I think any time that you can have a game that you were up, what, 5-1 or 5 nothing? In which one? In the Rangers game. 5-1. <laughs> okay, so 5-1. <laughs> and then came back. I'm pretty sure it was 5 nothing in the Jets game at one point. It was 5 nothing in the Jets game, yeah. It, okay. And then I, I think that's when they got on the – but 5-1 in the Rangers game, and they came back and tied it. And those are the kinds of games that I don't care who's in it. Joel Fistpump, don't know what happened. Um, Yankees just scored. Oh, there you Continue. go. Um, I think like you when you can have those kinds of games, it'll change as the season goes on. We see every season, everyone starts getting all excited about all the scoring. Do not get excited about all the scoring. Enjoy it while it lasts. The first two, three weeks of the season, you just have crazy scoring. The Pittsburgh Penguins are not going to give up 10 goals. I don't care who to the rest of the season. That's just not going to happen. We're not going to yeah. have a 10 spot put up. 
Um, and then debatably was, there was another big score put up last night. Um, and another big score today or not, not last night, but two days ago. Um, you know, 13 goals in your game. Um, the Caps put up six on the Canadians. And then today the, uh, the Sabres lost big to the Devils 6-2. Those games, those are not scores that we will see. The New Jersey Devils are not going to be putting up six goals a game. Um, and, you know, so it's fun, but enjoy it while it lasts. The scoring will return to normal. It starts strong every season and then dies. And everyone's like, oh, maybe we should make goalies' equipment smaller. The Sabres might give up six goals a game. <laughs> that, might, like, that might happen. So that might happen. But I don't... I Like, so as far as the Leafs go, like, they're, they're going to score a lot of goals. Like, so... They're not going to score score seven and eight every night, but like this is, I think this is a sign of things to come for them. Uh, it was, it was as much as I enjoyed beating the Rangers on Saturday night. Uh, that was a miserable game to watch for me because it just brought back like everything from last year. Yeah, you know, like how many times I watched the Leafs give up a lead. Uh, the one thing I am, I am curious to see if it is going, and I have, I have no idea how the numbers play out. I haven't actually looked at it. I'm just going based off of the games I've watched. It feels like there's a ton more penalties. And I don't know if is that does that happen every year? But like I did see that there has been last year at at this point there was like something like seven slashing penalties called. This at this point in the season there's been 42. That's a crackdown right there. So they are cracking down on uh, the slashing penalties. Apparently, I think one or none uh, calls have been made about the face-offs thing. And oh. you know what has you know what has been called though visors. That's that's a penalty. This. Don't even get me started about how dumb the refs are. This is arguably the most frustrating frustrating start to the season as far as refing. Like so they I don't know like I don't know I don't know if it's every other game. I've only again, I've only really watched Leafs games and I have watched the Leafs. Actually, like both both teams in the Leafs games have been getting like warnings and penalties for having weird fashion problems. So like Frederick Anderson got a warning for having blue tape on his stick. Joel, that's a that's illegal. You can, obviously we all know how detrimental it is to the game, to the safety of the players to have blue tape on a stick. You just can't have that. Yeah. So Connor Brown got in, like got a hit, was in the corner fighting for the puck. After the play, ref comes and gives him a warning for having his jersey tucked in. How is it like? Like and they showed the video of it going into the corner before the scrum, jersey out, coming out of the scrum, jersey tucked in. <laughs> so well, it's like <laughs> obviously the most important thing when you're in a scrum is to look good. So he just wanted to tuck it in, make sure that everything's okay. So it's just stuff like like so. And then the Leo Komarov got a penalty for his visor, which is probably the only one that I'm willing to say like. Leo should have been should have known because he got the warning, and then for some reason still didn't fix it, and then he got a penalty. So, just take the take the visor off, Leo. You don't have to wear it. But like, I don't know. Is this happening in other games? Have you experienced this in other games? I have not seen any of this fashion policing in the other games that I've watched. Now I know, uh, like, I'm sure that there has been in some, but in literally any of the other games I've seen, it hasn't come up. And I've I've watched, you know five or six so far. Um, it's just not a thing. So I don't know if it's just the attention. Part of what I get, and this is this is 100%. I haven't seen anyone talk about it, but like I am positive. The reason for the crackdown on the jerseys tucked in is because Adidas paid a lot of money to redesign these jerseys and put three stripes at the bottom of all these sweaters so that you th- look and are reminded of Adidas. If you have that sucker tucked in, there's no Adidas reminder with the stripes at the bottom. So for all these teams tucking in their sweaters, Adidas is losing money because of you. So don't do it. Get, Uncle Gary needs his money. Now, the one thing that I do know with all of this, that is in every game, 
the stupid face-off infractions. Like, talk about killing the like the pace of play. Like, it's just it is brutal. Every face-off a guy gets tossed out. If if you hated Every linesman face-off. last year, you're even more so this year. Every face-off, and then you know what? Whatever team gets tossed out, the other team gets a freebie because everyone's afraid to get a penalty. Like, watch. Anytime a guy gets tossed out, the other team wins the faceoff. Every time. I have seen one, literally one, that I can remember. Gabe Landeskog won one. And I was even like, wow, you actually tried at that faceoff? Whoever the opposing center was, I forget who it was. Just, he should not be taking faceoffs. If you cannot beat a winger at a draw who cannot cheat in the slightest, you're, you're benched. You're done. Call it. So... What's yeah, so it's just frustrating that these are the things overshadowing what should have been like a crazy start to the season. Did you know like I don't think I've ever had this before. So uh Mr. Tiny Mike and I are co managing a fantasy hockey team. I've might have heard mention. Our team in the first three or four days of the season had three hat tricks. Who from? So we got two, well, we have Ovi. So, so there's Ovi there's a couple. The Ovi scored all the goals, and then we had Wade Simmons. So and then we also have two two goal games from Mr. Evander Kane. So like, so you're doing well we're, for yourself. We're, we're scoring goals. Yeah, lots of goals getting scored, but it's just been it's been a fa- it's been a fast week. But so here's here's what's interesting. Are- talking about our fantasy teams. So we're talking about how much scoring there has been. In the NHL, how season starts off like crazy. Somehow, I have two shutouts this week. So do we. My goaltending has been just otherworldly. Ours has been horrible. <laughs> but we got two shutouts. I'm, I might have a 978 save percentage in that that bad boy. Yeah. So we don't have that. So we have. So we got we got uh, Henrik Lundqvist. He got pulled for giving up five goals in the first. Period, which I was extremely happy about. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, but yeah, so what? What's been your favorite part of the, se- the start of the season? Or is this? Should we take a moment to celebrate your three and O abs? Uh, two and one. Two and one. Yeah, yeah that's still a good start. That is a great start. Um, I have enjoyed being able to watch my Avalanche not be completely miserable, only slightly miserable. Um. Yeah, let's park on that for a second. It's been so alternating games. They've they've been good and bad. Today's game against the Bruins didn't get to watch all of it. Kind of just watch, um, rewatch some of it after the game was done. Um, after some Thanksgiving and saw you know what looked like some quality defense actually being played. Uh, Simeon Varlamov did not need to be as great as Jonathan Bernier needed to be on Saturday. Uh, in the four one loss to the Devils, in which Bernier honestly like he he made some outstanding saves. The four one game, the four one score was not on him. At least three of those, I think only three, maybe maybe the fourth one as well. Three of those are on the power play. So if you're giving up that many power play goals, um, you know you can't hang all of that on the goaltender. He kept that team in the game, and they played one of the worst third periods I've seen. So we stop right there. I don't think anyone's ever said, yeah, that four one loss. Not on Jonathan Byrne yet. It's never been said before. <laughs> well, there, it's a first. Now it, it's, it's been yeah. said. Here you go. Jonathan Byrne sitting there being like, yeah, look at me. Wasn't me. And he, he, like he, after the game, they were all, the talk was, man, this guy, like he could actually push Varlamov. And um, that was kind of the talk, both of them, that they want to be able to push each other. And um, I think that's what you want from your goaltenders, that they push each other to get better. Um so that's obviously good. We've got that happening. Um, the the Avs, you know, aside from that third period, I've been quite pleased with what I've seen. Obviously, two and one. They started last year fairly strong as well. Um, a four nothing game in Boston. It's nice to get the shutout, um, especially on the road. Started the season with a three game road trip, so I'm happy. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm not I'm not assuming that they'll end up with a winning record. So from here on out it's only going to get worse, but um enjoy it while it lasts. A positive goal differential. 
And uh, all in all, I am quite pleased and contented with what I've seen from them. Can I give you some stats to back up a point that I made earlier? Yeah, do it. Is it is it like fancy stat based? Oh, this is this is stupid. I'm watching the Leafs in Chicago trade penalties literally like every other play. This is exactly no, it's not fantasy stats, but this is exactly what I'm going at. So last year, power play opportunities per, per game was two point nine nine. Okay, that was that's per power game. play ch- per team or total? Total two point so like nothing. So three per game, three penalties a game. Yeah. Maybe it is per team. I don't know if it's per that team. That feels per team. Either way, it well, doesn't matter. Either way, because the stat is the same for this year so far. 4.21. Whew. So that's so a full, f- like almost a 50% increase. Yeah, more. Um, oh, yeah. Like, so that's a lot. It's a ton. Um, And that is significant. So like the year before last year, 3.1. Year before that, 3.06. So like... 2.99 was low, but not that much lower. Right. We're now, we're just like, so we are, we do have a ton more penalties right now. Yeah. And it's uh, goals, goals for the season. Again, obviously, super small sample size. We're up, uh, it was 2.59 last year, 3.05. So we do have ton more goals, ton more penalties. Well, wow. and and I guess that is one way to maintain a scoring pace, right? Like if you want this high scoring, give giving an average team um, that I think you're you're probably you know an average of one and a half more penalties a game. You're probably on average half a goal more more a game, right? So yeah. you're looking at that. That's definitely one way. If the NHL is looking to increase scoring, more penalties that'll do it. Chicago just took another penalty. This is crazy. <laughs> How many penalties are you taking right now? So, quickly back to your abs. Three games in, how optimistic are you feeling? Um, I'm, I'm pleased, yeah. I think that there's, there's good things to, that are happening. Um, the, the defense has been better, um, so we don't need Varlamov and Bernier to be great. Again, aside from that, that one game. So, I, I look at, you know, two games, they were decent. They went out, they beat the Rangers, played a fairly good game, um, outshot the Devils uh, on Saturday, even though they lost, uh, which I think when you're down early, that's to be expected. And, you know, today had a, a quality game against the the Bruins. So um, I think the biggest issue of concern is, is still the lingering Matt duchesne He's getting asked about this after every game, especially, you know, ahead of uh, today's game. I guess the comments were made last night. Uh, Peter Forsberg's comments about the fact that if a, he was in charge, we would have, he would bench Duchesne and then trade him. And uh, I think, you know, what well, all we need is another former avalanche. Great. Meddling with this team. It's, it's always gone well. Yeah. Uh what about what about your your second team? The Canes. What are we what calling are... this? What do we call this? It's not like your bandwagon team. Is it like I don't know. I don't know what we call it. I got we got to come up for it like with a the nice little nice little term for this for your second team. Yeah, I, we can come up with something for them, but my my Hurricanes um they yeah, very exciting start. They one against the Wild in a shootout. Uh, you know, a win is a win. You can look at it like that. Um, a five-four shootout victory. Nothing to uh, nothing to be too pleased with. But again, you win opening night. Um, I think they're hitting the road for what I have learned is their stereotypical start of the year road trip. So you know, I'm I'm pleased. That's a win. They're obviously the Caps with Ovi on their back on, uh, I guess on Ovi's back are doing great. They're up right now on the bolts. So we'll see. Maybe he's out to prove me wrong. Maybe he heard that I ditched them as my team and he's, he's looking to looking for some vengeance. Yeah. Do you ever find, I always find the start of the season weird because you have see you have some teams that have played three, maybe even four games now, 
and then some teams who have only played one. Like it's all so it's such, it's so weird that the schedule gets so lopsided this quickly. Yeah, and that's when you look at like you can look at the standings and say, well, the Hurricanes are already you know two games back, or you can look at um, the you know the Jets. Preds and Stars, all winless, are already six points back of the Blues, and you can maybe start to get a little uh oh. But come on, it's only only this far. What about Vegas? Two and zero to start the season. Have they have they played at home yet? They have not. No, they played. They don't. They don't get to do that until uh, tomorrow. They they open at home tomorrow versus Calgary. Obviously, the the hot Vegas Calgary rivalry that's going to be happening. No, the Coyotes tomorrow. They're playing a home and home oh, against the Coyotes. At, I was looking at Los Angeles. Apparently, Calgary plays in L.A. tomorrow. Okay, yeah, those are not the same. What? Those aren't the same teams? No. Um, L.A. also two and zero, tied with Vegas at the top of the standings. Yeah. How long before Vegas is at the bottom of the standings? Not too long, but the I think the real story coming out of Vegas that's overshadowing this great start. Um, the team and there, there have been teams with a lot of very like strong social media presences. I think the Jackets are well known for theirs and getting the fans involved. But Vegas is like it's almost like, and I know like I know that it's known who the person running this their social media account is, but I, I just find it so weird because it's like an average fan has taken over their account. Like, it's just the most excited, the most giddy, like, the cockiest, weirdest Twitter experience I've ever seen an actual team have. Like, it, it's almost like they're also learning what it's like to be a professional sports team because it, it just does not... It's always surprising. I'm like, wow, an actual team just tweeted that out. You just said... We all know who's like actually running their account. I don't. Okay. Well, we. Are you gonna tell me later? I don't. Well, it's. I guess we can. Like, it's not a. It's not a secret. A lot of these teams have like some intern running their Twitter accounts. Right. Um. I forget his name, but we. It's easily known. Okay, I'll go find it. I was like, I didn't realize. I thought it might have been. I don't know. Who's the? It's not the. It's not the. uh, The salary cap guy, if that's who you're thinking of. Uh, okay. Yeah. Who's, um, whose site's been down so long, I don't remember. Cap Geek. It's not him. He's too busy right. doing Cap Geek things. No, no, that's not who I thought it was. I thought it was, like, the girl that does the... Oh, the, the gifts. Uh, yeah. No, I don't, I don't think it's her. She, she always disappears, comes back, stuff like that. I figured she might have... She always goes and works for a team every now and then. thought it was maybe her. No, I wish it was. I haven't actually seen any gifts coming out of that team, so... um. So the, yeah, two and zero. But the biggest news coming out of there is their giant mishandling of now. This here is a name that I will most certainly mess up. So I will try my hardest yeah. to to not mess it up. Vadim Sapachyov. I think we nailed it. I think we nailed it. But uh, he global was there. We. Pardon Glo- the, the global, global the global. We nailed it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, this is a guy I came over from the KHL this off season. Quality career over there, great career. Uh, 30 years old, signed a two-year deal with the Knights. And now, uh, because of the Knights' weird affiliate affliction for defensemen, they don't have room for this guy on their roster. He was the only guy they could safely send him down to the AHL without having to put him through waivers. So they did, haven't brought him back up. And now there's talks that he is going to be heading back to Russia. How, like... The, the Knights are finding very exciting ways to screw this up immediately. Well, that's not the other thing that was surprising out of their camp this week with sending guys to the AHL. Because uh, w- the trade happened after, right? So, we recorded yeah. Or- yeah, the trade happened after. The, the trade was like Wednesday, wasn't it? It was opening day. Yeah, so, so they sent... Uh, Carl's boy, Calvin, Calvin Pickard. Yeah. Form, former boy, Calvin Pickard. I unfollowed him on Twitter. It's, we're no longer a thing. Okay. So they sent, sent him to the AHL. He had to go through waivers, which I think the hockey world was pretty surprised that he didn't get, 
like picked up on waivers. Everyone is continually surprised. I saw person after person saying, there is no chance Martin Marinson gets through waivers. And he did. Everyone, the same thing. No chance hey, Calvin Pickard gets through waivers. He did. Like I I was let me tell you, I've watched Martin Marinson play. He, he was always going to go. <laughs> right. I, I just my default assumption now, as much as like my brain says this guy shouldn't get through waivers, like in my head, I was like, Oh, Calvin Pickard should get claimed. But the no one gets claimed on waivers pretty much anymore. It's it's so su- surprisingly small. The Avs claimed Patrick Nemeth off waivers from the Stars. Was glad he's done well for us so far. I saw the uh, the Rangers claimed someone today, but like the names that you think will get claimed don't. Yeah. So apparently, the reason why the Leafs didn't claim him, and instead traded for him, was because they wanted to keep Curtis McElhinney. Because they didn't want to put Curtis McElhinney on waivers. Because obviously he's getting claimed, right? Yeah. This is my theory. <laughs> if if Calvin Pickard's not getting claimed, let me tell you, Curtis McElhinney's not. <laughs> That's not happening. And he hasn't played yet, but Pickard... Like, I'm I'm so confused by this trade, and I want to love it so much. But because he didn't get claimed on waivers, I like I'm so confused if I should love this or not. Like I'm just like, what don't I know that everyone else does? But what what you gave up was uh, what, Timothy Lilgren. No, okay, that that's is, the good one, right? That is the good one. Okay, Tobias, Tobias Lindbergh. Lindbergh. Okay. Like I always get those two confused. There's Yeah, so do I. Okay, the bad the guy one of the guys you got in the uh Dion Phaneuf Lee scene. Yeah. And he might have been he's probably an AHL or the problem is the leaf system's so deep that he's actually like they were talking about sending him to the ECHL. So that's and a sixth round draft pick. So they didn't really give up anything. No, and they, you know, they keep that roster spot. So if someone were to come up, that apparent, if somehow there's a waiver eligible guy that they like, they still have that roster spot. Or if they want to make a trade and just add a piece, again, they don't like their depth is crazy. I don't see any move that the Leafs would make where they're taking on assets and not moving something else out because they're just going to have more people to move around, and it doesn't make a ton of sense. Yeah, so like basically the reason why they did they and then they can they can keep Pickard in the AHL as long as they want, which I I don't get. It makes zero sense to me why but but so all this to say, I'm confused what the Vegas Knights are doing. Like it just doesn't seem it doesn't like it seems like having three like two NHL goalies in Fleury and Pickard and then like a kind of a, a long shot prospect in Subban at this point like you see like that seems like a good scenario now they're like oh, we're gonna go with Fleury and hope Subban can play 25 games at some sort of capacity that's not exciting it's not an exciting thought no it's not uh, and yeah I, I think to me if you think Subban is good enough you shouldn't be trying to win right now, so let him let him spend another year in the A. It doesn't. It's not going to hurt him. I wouldn't think to be in a new environment, a new scenario, and just get some of that experience. Um, and you know they they've now turned. Now, granted, I think maybe this speaks to how terrible the options and the roster were for the Avalanche in this draft. That the piece that they gave up has now been turned into a sixth round pick. And Tobias Lindbergh. Like, there's that doesn't speak well to what they were doing in that draft necessarily. Yeah, like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm okay with teams who are, who are just, who are gathering assets and prospects, but like, they're not doing that. So, although the guy that they got, I don't know if he actually played in the game, but the guy they got from the Leafs, who, let me remind you, was not going to make the Toronto Marlies, was practicing on the first line the day after the trade. That's a that's a jump. Yeah. 
So he went from fifth line in the AHL to first line in the NHL. Yeah, he hasn't, uh, from what I can tell, he didn't play in uh, in their game there the other day. So uh, perhaps perhaps uh, that will come where he can get that first line time. Um, yeah, so, you know, we have that. And then obviously there's the teams that have put up giant numbers, some of the players, right? So if you look at this, the, you know, rundown of players with the most points, you've got Ovi there. He's got six goals, no assists, most selfish player ever. Just seven doesn't, goals. yeah, seven goals, seven points, no assists, just doesn't pass ever, only scores. We knew that. Yeah. Um, then you've got his center, Evgeny Kuznetsov. With zero goals and seven assists. It's going well for him. Uh, and then the Canes, and then a ton of Chicago Blackhawks. Because they scored all the goals the other day. Yeah, because they, they dropped a big old 10 spot on the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, which, like, that that's a team. And this is one where, like, I think we saw it looking into, I, I wouldn't say just our fantasy league, like, you started to see it around the league. Um, or, you know, around fantasy leagues, people start to overreact. And that's the first place that you start to see this play out. People sitting Matt Murray in favor of Cam Talbot when Matt Murray and the Penguins went ahead and shut out, um, the, uh, the Oilers. Um, I saw one of our listeners had, uh, had made that choice. It's, you know, I, I think you look at that and you say, well, that's, you know, it's tough because he just gave up 10 goals. Uh, as a team, obviously Niemi started that game. Obviously Niemi started that game. Um, but you look at it and you're like, well, yeah, like it, it's hard to trust that. But this early in the season, after two games, you should not be readjusting your evaluation of any of these teams unless like there's an injury. There hasn't been a groundbreaking injury thus far. Like if the Pittsburgh Penguins, I picked them to win the Stanley Cup again. I'm not changing my mind. I'm not like, well, I'm off the Penguins bandwagon. They're a terrible team after giving up 10 goals. No, this that's not the case. There's so many reasons that you could do that. If you if they were to give up ten goals in the middle of January, I wouldn't all be all of a sudden be changing my opinion. We're two games in. Let's let's all calm down a little bit. How do you feel about Mister Bobrovsky that hasn't scored, hasn't let a goal in yet? Uh, I feel great. I drafted on both my fantasy teams, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do well. He's only played one game, though, right? Yeah, that's accurate. Okay, so uh, is this the year? Is this the year that Jake Allen? It could be. Jake, I know, like Jake Allen. That you, was my sleeper pick last year. Well, you had you had big hopes and dreams for him this year. Well, I, I, I not quite as high as last year, but I, I kind of like he kind of let me down last year. Yeah, and now this year, like I'm wondering, like was I just was I just one year too early? Yeah, I can see that. Like obviously this year or today, played the Islanders, gave up a goal to Andrew Ladd, which is to be expected. That guy scores a ton. Um, can't it. can't Stop fault him on it. that one. And then you know, still got the win in the shut in the shootout. So, uh, the Blues three and oh, first team to three wins this season. Yeah, they're they're gonna be good. I think. I think they're going to be good. They got a kid. They got this kid. Uh, you say Tarasenko? Is that how you say that, his name? I've, I've might have heard of him. Is he is he going to be okay? I think he can score a little. Okay, but we'll have to see. Okay. Um. You know, seriously, seriously, in this, this, this mm-hmm. is is Petri Angelo like just like quietly like one of the most underrated demon. So I you think, didn't really care about him. See, here's how I feel about him. I feel like he's one of those guys that became so overrated that everyone overrated him for a while. And then like he became known as this overrated guy. And now it's like swung the other way. Cause to yeah. me, to me, like I'm still, I still see so many people who think that he's like this great, he's not, he's not this offensive powerhouse that people want him to be. Right. And like, right. That, and hope that he is, but he's become, uh, you know, a a quality piece of that Blues team. I just I, I like like whenever I see him play, like you're just he's a guy that you're happy you you're like you love him on your team. 
Like you don't, you're never sad that he's on your team, isn't he the captain? Probably, sure yeah. Yeah, that's good. Anyways, that'll be. So, how do you uh, feel? Speaking about my hurricanes, how do you feel about the the double captain? Oh, that's dumb. I'm not a fan. No, it's dumb. Like, just don't have a captain. If you can't choose one, don't have one. Just go three assistants. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the Vegas Knights that has, like, 19 assistants? I think so, yeah. I think the entire team is a captain at this point. Because well, it's all, like, it's all like character role players that they picked in the <laughs> Right. Yeah. They're like, man, we've, like, got, we've got leadership for days on this team. Yeah, we just got a team of Matt Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I, uh, I don't know. I'm okay with it. It doesn't – captaincy is what, whatever. I don't yeah, get too excited. Here we go. We're going to play a little game. Classic, classic radio style game. Buy or sell. Okay. All sampler size, overreaction. Here we go. And we're just going to, just based off of just quick reactions. Buy or sell, Winnipeg Jets, 0-2, 13 goals against, only have scored five. Buying or selling their start. Uh, so in this situation, buy would mean I think that this is the real Jets, right? Yeah, so buy is their current situation. Sell is they're going to change their current situation. I buy. I do not think they're that the Winnipeg terrible. Jets are going to be very good this year. Okay, buy or sell. 2-0, New Jersey Devils. Are they 3-0? I don't know if this is updated. No, uh, that is updated, yeah. Uh, I will sell. One of those games was against the Avalanche. <laughs> the other game was against the Sabres. Okay, so you're, so you're I'm selling. selling. I do not think that they are... A team that will put up, again, 10 goals in two games? No, the New Jersey Devils are not that team. Buy or sell Henrik Lundqvist start to the season? I'm 50-50. Like it, so it's, you're, you're holding. Yeah, I'll hold. Because we, we talked about it in the preseason. I, I know you, again, maybe much like Jake Allen, maybe you are a year late on the falling apart of Hank. Um, cause he is, he's old. So there's, there's no arguing that. So moral of the story, whichever goalies I talked up and whichever goalies <laughs> I talked down next year is the year jump on that next year. <laughs> yeah. When you're looking to make your picks next year, just see who Joel liked and hated this year. Yeah. But Broski, I hammered that guy in the preseason. I'm pretty sure. So next year, terrible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go. Where should we go next? Here Buy or go. sell Ottawa Senators? Uh, I don't. Two. Yeah, I push. Like they haven't been terrible. They like again. They lost to the Red Wings. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not the proudest of moments. But um, yeah, it push again. Buy or sell uh, Kyle Ocposo. Zero points. Minus. Six. I know everyone loves the plus minus. Sell, sell. Ogpost is better than that. Okay. Yeah. Um, here you go. A uh, kid by the name of Connor McDavid. Mm hmm. Buy or sell. Think he'll be good this year? No, I'm just kidding. I think he'll be good. But uh, to quote Mr. Yarmory Auger, buy or sell 100 goals for Connor yeah, McDavid. Crazy. Crazy. Jeremy Yager's getting old. <laughs> like, like, we're starting to notice it. So, yeah, there, it's just been, there's been some weird starts. Do you think, so the last one is, do you think Ovi finishes the year with the most goals? So he's already got himself, what, a a three-goal lead on Mika Zabinijad, who will not finish second. Um yeah. I don't know. Like I think at this point you have to look at it and say in the next in the next he's played three games, so or in the middle of his third game, seven goals already. So in the next seventy nine games, can Ovi go a goal a game? I think that's possible. If you would have said can Ovi score forty one goals this game, I think that's possible. So if you look at it from that point of view, that's me. You That's mean like half a goal a game. Yeah, sorry, half a goal a game. Oh my goodness! Half I was like, a goal. a goal a game. No, this guy's gonna score ninety goals no, this year. A, a goal every other game. Okay. Um, you know that's forty-one goals for the season. 
at that at this point that puts him at about 47 46 47 goals yeah um and i think like you look at that that's possible who who could put up a number higher than that the only guy i'm looking at who could do that is mcdavid do i think he will essentially in answering that question do i think we have a 50 goal scorer this year um yes i do player though what do you mean McDavid's not that player? He's he's a points getter. I don't think he's gonna score. I don't like I just don't think like he's not a goal scorer. Like you know who like a year or two from now you're gonna be sitting there and it's gonna be like Patrick Line. Like that's gonna be or or Matthews. Like those are your guys who score goals. McDavid is much more of a is is much more of a playmaker, points getter. I'm not saying for all you Oilers fans I'm not saying these other guys are better. I'm just saying they're going to score more goals. Right. And I like, can I can agree with that. And I don't think either of them will. You know what? You've talked me out of it. Yes. I think that I don't think McDavid will score 50. I don't think anyone will score 50. Yeah. I, I, I could very well see Ovi being the leading goal scorer this season. Yeah. What's, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I could see it, like, is this kind of, this might be his last year that he does it, like, this is kind of, is this, oh, he's kind of like, it's not like, not like he's going away, but like, this might be his, his last. I guess the only best. reason that I don't think it'll happen is because when he disappears to go play for Russia in the Olympics, and then gets suspended for doing so, that's going to hurt his goal totals. That's going to hurt a lot. You think he's going to go, hey? I think someone's going to go. I'm really excited to see who it is. Someone's going to go and then have to get suspended for it's, it. It's not going to be it's not going to be a guy like Ovi though. It's going to be a guy It's going to be a borderline player. Like Tobias Lindbergh's going to go play for Sweden. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, leave the Golden Knights top line, get suspended. What a guy. You want to know who who could be like Dark Horse Sleeper Rocket Richard Trophy winner. I do. Probably, like, you might try out with Challenge Joey, like, guy like Kucherov. I don't say that's a, that's not a long shot, though. He's been up at the top for, like, last year he finished, what, third or fourth? Yeah, but no one ever talks about him in the top goal scorers. Like, you never hear, like, hey, like, who's going to win the Rocket Richard Trophy? Kucherov. No one ever says Kucherov unless you're Tampa Joe. You know who's currently here? Here's a guy currently tied for tenth in goal scoring. Um, a guy who I don't think is talked about as one of the, uh, you know, the great prospects was it didn't turn into exactly what everyone had hoped him to be, but currently tied for tenth in goals. Neil Yakupov. What about that guy? Stop it. <laughs> but seriously, Neil Yakupov, two goals for the Avalanche. Yeah, well, if you saw one of them today, it had nothing to do with him. I think the fact that Tuca was so, uh, you know, he knew, I can't let this guy get in on me. I need to be aggressive. I need to come out of my crease. I need to make my way out to him. I can't let this happen. That's Stop it. Stop embarrassing yourself, just like Tuca did again. (laughs) It is is kind of weird finding myself cheering for Neil Yakupov, though. Because I'm, I'm 100. Like I want the best for him. He's on my team, obviously. I, I think it, you know, there's the the Cinderella story aspect of it is possible. I love. Who knows what could happen? Is there anyone on your team? Here's a good conversation. Do you ever have someone on your team that you want the worst for? Like, and again, <laughs> before, before you all jump on me, I'm not talking about like the worst, like like an part, injury, like, like injury or like bad things in their lives. I'm talking about just like straight up gameplay, so that they're no longer on your team or something like that i don't know um i would definitely say that on the current colorado avalanche roster um like i have an affliction for carl soderberg just because we have such great names um but if it wasn't for that he'd be on that list um jonathan bernier is a guy who falls under that category like i just I just really want him to disappear. What are you going to do? What do you do with like who's? He, but part of that also has to be who replaces him, right? 
So like, you, do you have a like you may, have a maybe Calvin Pickard? Maybe we claim him off waivers. Wait, we didn't. You can't do that anymore. Seriously, I can't believe that my team freaking thought. You know what's a great idea? Let's just roll Jonathan Bernier out there instead of Pickard. Yeah. What are they thinking? Because, like, I don't. Because like it's Dominic Moore on my team. Yeah, but that's like, that's a whatever guy. Yeah, but still. Is Carl Soderberg not a whatever guy in your team at this point? Well, not when he's making that much money. Yes, that's that's true. why. I would love, if you have someone on your team, let us know. Let us know who that guy on your team that's like, I just want him to go away. Don't worry, For... Boston fans. We already know it's Marshawn. We get it. <laughs> that's a, it's a long list there in Boston. Um, it's just they want their team to leave, go to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> that's That's the Flames. They want to go to Seattle. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Joel, we are, you know, obviously the last game for high sticking this week is currently ongoing. So we don't know who has points in that game. Who currently would have the game winner in that, though? Uh, it's one of the Hawks. Jonathan Taves. We got lots hey, of Taves picks. So if he yeah. ends up with that winner, these standings are getting flip turned upside down. I don't get the impression. I guess I, I could be wrong. I, I think there's going to be a couple more goals in this game. Okay. Yeah, there's Maybe still one by two, each. two thirds of a period left. So yeah, it's 13 minutes. Yeah. Oh, a, a Blackhawk just got injured by Andreas Bjorgman. Is that is that on your team? Yeah, but I don't know if Andreas is actually his first name. Oh, okay. Bjorgman. <laughs> it sounds but, logical. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, know why that was a penalty. You could that, that has been a thing that's happening. Debrin Cat just got injured. I don't think that was a penalty, but anyway, it's just because the guy got hurt. Right. Other than that, but um, did we have? Was there lots of points given out? There in, was. Well, obviously, the uh, the, the first game of the season, we handed out all the McDavid points, yeah. and then uh, Drysital had the assist on that, so that was a, the second follow up. Then. Uh, we had the second game of the season, Pittsburgh versus Chicago. I believe Mr. Taves had the winner in that one. And then the game after, um, we had James Neal with the game winner for the Golden Knights, which meant that the current leader, writer for the website, Mr. Alex Watson, went go. three for three to start the season, which is a solid run. Well, He's currently leading. Are we... We're giving out a puck... Or stick. Yeah. Of your choice. After after this week? Yeah, or is it after this right week? Now? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've still got one more week. We're not going to do it after five games, but at the end of this week, so once we pick these games, this will be the last. Also, Joel, I don't know if you've noticed this. Um since we started recording the show, it has gotten incredibly dark in my house. I was wondering <laughs> if like I forgot to turn on a light on before we started. Like I have a sheet of paper to write our show notes on. I can't see it anymore, so we're That's just fine. we're just going in blind. Um, yeah, but let's let's get to some high sticking. If you have not played this game before, high sticking is when we pick the game that we would watch every day of the week and tell you which one you should watch, and then you get to go to Twitter to our Twitter account at Fourth Line Podcast and tell us who you pick one player for each team who will score the game winning goal. And if you pick correctly, the game winner, you get three points. The first assist on it gets second two points. Second assist one. Joel's shaking his head. Something bad happened. Okay, so that penalty that I didn't know was a penalty. Yeah. So the close ref who was in the corner with him was looking exactly at the head. Doesn't call the penalty. It was the ref at center ice. So the ref at center ice who was also looking. They were both looking directly at it. The ref at center calls it. The one right beside them doesn't call it. That's a mistake. How do you, like... I have a prediction. The thing that I would buy the most out of the preseason is how many times I am going to rant about the ref. (laughs) Joel's, Joel's not happy. Like, seriously. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Like, did did Gary just go, you know what? Remember that year that the refs went on strike in the NFL and they went with replacement refs? That sounds like a good idea. Let's just go replacement refs. But like with our own. Let's just make them all change what they have to do. 
Yeah, but like they're just it's not good and it's so annoying. There was a four on three in this game at one point. That's not good. Ugh. All right, Joel. Let's let's get back. High staking. Do you want to pick first or do you want me to go? You go. All right. Tomorrow so worked up I don't even have the schedule up. Oh well, that's fine. We'll 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 filibuster and give it to you. So Tomorrow night, Vegas has their home opener against the Coyotes. You got to do that? I think you got to do that. First home, first home game from a, for a franchise, Vegas and Arizona. This game's over. I Joel's, told you there's going to be more goals. Joel's still upset. A power play goal? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Wednesday? I don't know. Nothing good. I guess Pittsburgh, Washington. That's really the only good game. What are we looking at the same schedule? Wednesday. Yeah, it's looking at Wednesday. Okay, you know, here's here's my public service announcement for right now. This is usually my go to application for these things. Yeah. But the score's apt to start this season. Miserable. Struggling. They I could not find to set the alert for yesterday's Montreal. New York Rangers game. There was only one game on the schedule that they had to get right. Couldn't find it. Anyways, that's well, my rant. I am. Who Washington knows if NHL.com is right, but we'll go Washington Pittsburgh. It's probably yes. Yeah, I was like, that's the NBC game of the night. It's a, that's decided a, that's not a, to go an actual rivalry. Yeah, Good they decided them. to not go Islanders Anaheim. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, on the next night, we've got a lot of weird games still. Um, to start the season, we've got some Sharks, Sabres, a couple winless teams. Do you want to watch the Sabres travel to San Jose and get no, uh, destroyed? Or do you want to watch, watch the Wild and the Blackhawks? No. The Stars and the Preds? There you go. Sure. That sounds like a good game. I like how this is my day, but I'm letting Joel. I'm taking the next day. You okay, get fine. Stars, here. Preds. Okay, here. I'll give you some options. Um... <laughs> do you want to watch your Colorado Avalanche or do you want to watch uh, your third team, the Columbus Blue Jackets? Let's go some Jackets Rangers. That'll, okay. that'll be a test. See if the Rangers are still good. Okay. Uh, Saturday night, there's just, you got to go with the one. First time. First time, long time. First time season. Leafs Habs. <laughs> Canucks Flames. Oh, no, don't go Canucks Flames. No, we're going. Oh, we're going terrible. Yeah, no, we're not going Canucks Flames. Um, Canucks one and zero, undefeated. Yeah, but you don't want to go. You don't want to go Leafs and Habs. No, we're Saturday, going. We're going Saturday Leafs. night. We're hockey. going Leafs fat Habs. Leafs and Fabs. Leafs Habs on Saturday. Um, I just called it Saturday night hockey, not hockey night. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I'm becoming less Canadian by the day, but I'm not American. Let me tell you that. All right. I don't know what I'm becoming. Saturday is a day of weird games. We've got Boston, Vegas, Sabres, Ducks, and Islanders, Kings. I'm going Islanders, Kings. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, no, no game Monday. We're not gonna. We're not. Nobody watch that game on Monday. Just get ready for the pod. I don't. I would watch that game. Watch Monday Night Football. Well, actually, here's why we can't do that game. Because we need that game to be done so that we can hand out a stick and or puck on the show. But do know that Tampa and Detroit play on Monday. So, Yeah. uh, Yeah. Who knows? This is... Here's some interesting thoughts. I might not be here next Monday, so... Ooh, do we need to uh, have a break glass in case of emergency co-host? Yeah, we might have to. I don't know. We gotta check this out. All right. Well, uh, we'll talk about that. But actually, don't watch Monday Night Football. It's Colts Titans. Ooh, that sounds terrible as well. Both of their starting quarterbacks are injured. You know what you should do on Monday night? Spend time with your family. Spend time with your family. <laughs> Just go and say, "I love you, family. I'm gonna spend time with you. I'm choosing you over sports." They don't have to know that there's no good sports on. Yeah, they'll be so happy. There's probably going to be uh, playoff baseball. I was going to say, there's probably going to be like an elimination baseball game or something like that happening. But uh, That'll be like the middle or the start. That'll be like, 
that'll be like the like game two or three of the the yeah. NLCS. I, I forgot how fast baseball playoffs go. Yeah, because you know what they don't do? What every other sport does, and just make it drag on forever. That's true. Joel's right. Game three of that. So you know, if you want to watch like an early round, but or spend time with your family. Spend time with your family. Just be like, hey, family. You matter. Wow. <laughs> Do not say that. Because then they'll question whether you thought they mattered before. Don't do that. Joel, where have you... This is the kind of advice I really could have used earlier. Wait, 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 wait. Did you tell someone in their family, in your family that they mattered today? Oh, I have definitely said that to family members. Not, I do not remember it today, but like... <laughs> Yeah, I've said that. I don't think is that something you want to hear? Because like you matter, Joe. You matter to me. Yeah, but the fact that you're saying it makes me wonder. Like, why are you saying that? Because either something's happened where I either where I don't think that I matter, or if it's just coming out of the blue from you, you at some point didn't think that I mattered. I don't think that's a good thing to say. No, no, like significant other. Like, no, your spouse partner doesn't want to hear, you know what? You matter. Like that, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. not romantic. That's, that's true. Uh, this has been Joel's Counseling Coach. Uh, thank you to Joel for giving everyone relationship tips. This isn't count because I'm just straight up giving you advice and telling you what to do. So it's something else. Yeah. This is a new thing. That's the closest I could come up with. That's fair. Um, But... Listen to Joel. He's smart. He knows stuff. Mm-hmm. I say things. <laughs> that's, that's accurate. <laughs> that's about as far as you can go. He does say stuff. Um, Joel. Carl. The fine folks of the Alberta Podcast Network have plenty of shows for you to listen to and check out. Do you want to know what those shows are? I do. Okay. Here is just a generic rundown of shows there is a movie about bollywood films do you like bollywood films there's a movie about it or, a or like podcast. a podcast i don't think i've ever seen a bollywood film really i have they are the ones i have watched are much different than like a hollywood film but yeah, okay. you can check that out um there's also a political show called the broadcast um I know some people that would like to listen to that yeah some folks that are into politics. Yeah. Well, um, you can talk about that. It's also about women in politics. So you can check that out and learn a, a little bit about that. Um, there's the show we talked about it before. Don't call me a guru. They're still telling people not to call them gurus. Man. I wish I could tell people that. I would say, like, after this episode, some people could say that you're a relationship guru. You're our relationship guru. Uh, Nothing. We should put a disclaimer on this show. That if something goes wrong because of what I said, it's not my fault. Yeah, Joel is not a licensed counselor. Yeah. Um, He's also not a licensed relationship advice giver. Can you get a license for that? I doubt it. Huh? Well, you can no. get a license for a lot of things these days, though. Nobody wants... You don't want that type of responsibility. I don't know. Some some people think that they should be the president. That's a lot of responsibility. There's someone who wants that responsibility. You gotta be a little out there, though. I don't want that responsibility. I don't want very much responsibility at all. Like, the fact that there's people that listen to this show and, like, listen to our advice about stuff... That's about as much responsibility as I can handle. Do they listen to our advice, or do they just hear what we say? Mm, strong, strong take. Um, is this becoming another falling apart end to the show? No. Okay. Because we're we're <laughs> are we not are we not technically still in a live read for the Alberta Podcast Network? I think that's over. Okay. Yeah. Either way. Go to that website. Check out those podcasts. Yeah, albertapodcastnetwork.com. Um, uh, we, if you go to there and you just scroll down, you will find the first show there I think is probably my favorite one. It's this show called The Fourth Line Podcast. Oh, 
that one's I heard it's really good. Yeah, I've heard great things about it. Um, so check it out if you want to. Um, that's about it. Is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. Do no, we have hockey's back. It's back, folks. We talked about actual like statistics, things that happened in games. It feels good. Um, do we have a fifth line coming out here soon? I don't know. Oh no, it's that was just recently because I wasn't around. Yeah, just because it's mm. been like a month and a half since you did one. That makes me sad. You listened to that one though. I did. Joel doesn't listen to the episodes he's on. I don't listen to the episodes I'm on either. So like, I don't blame him. Um, but he I, listened to the fifth line. I, I also tend. I, I have not had a ton of time for podcasts lately, so I also don't listen to the ones that I'm not on. But I did listen to that fifth line. Yeah. I yeah. Go. Both of us have l- dropped our podcast listenership. L- changes. Which makes me sad. There's good shows out there. There are. I yeah, I don't know. Anyway. I honestly I, I thought I was like, man, I'm gonna have a lot more time now that I take the train to work, I'm gonna have so much more time for podcasts, but that's like enough time for one a day. I have listened to, and I was actually just thinking about this the other day. So I got a Blake Shelton CD in my car right now. Yeah. And it's been in my car for about six months to more than that. And it's the only CD that has been <laughs> on my car. It's a great CD, and I love it. But I was just thinking the other day, I was like, man, I need to put a new CD in my car. Yeah. And it's like, it's because partly the reason why is because Hank Stinkin loves, so he, Blake Shelton wrote that song for the Angry Birds movie. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah, so it's on that CD, and he loves that song. Oh, because it's got one of those I don't know the what like the instrument that goes boing boing boing. You know that one? It's in like lots of country songs. Yeah, that I don't know what it's called. I don't it's either. A, it's in that song all the time. Okay, so he's always just going boing. Yeah, boing. Hmm. Anyways, what do you? What's what's what are you excited about looking for? Like most exciting thing about hockey you're looking for. We just started. You're like, okay, now the season started. This week I'm excited about I'm excited for more Avalanche hockey. I'm excited for their home opener. That's weird. Carl's excited about Avalanche hockey. It's look I like I said, it's not gonna last long. Let's though. enjoy it. No, I mean I'm excited for you. Okay, I'm thank you. I'm happy for you. You're, I'm looking for Looking forward to seeing Carl's smile when they win. Yeah, it'll be rare, but it'll happen maybe at some well, point. I'm um, hoping that they're still in it until like Christmas for you. Okay, that'd be that'd be great. Um, but like, here's the here's the deal, Joel. Yeah, they're still like they're fancy. The fancy stats, they're Corsi, twenty second in the league. It's that's not very not, good. It's not the worst. No, you know who's the worst by like a long shot. Don't say my team. The 1-0 Vancouver Canucks. So. They've only played one game, though, so that's like that's got to be tough to... We're talking extremely small sample size here. And, and again, with the amount of penalties being called, this is five-on-five five shot attempts. You have some pe- some power plays. You have some penalties against you. This is going to skew it a lot. No, your, your Leafs are doing good. They're 12th. Okay. That doesn't include the, the game presently happening, but... Well, it's most least scored again. You were right. Look at that. Told you. So what's the? It's three two. Hawks two, now. Leafs, Leafs are on the power. I actually turned it off. I was fairly disgusted with what was happening. Okay. Well, I, after us poo pooing him to start the show, uh, Richard Ponick currently the active candidate for game winner. Look at that. Um, any? What's it got you excited? I'm 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 looking for Matthews. Looks great. He yeah. hasn't. Quite, he hasn't just. He hasn't really. He scored. I think he scored one goal. But like, hey, wasn't it? Little, wasn't that the fourth line that scored for the Leafs just now? I don't know. I'm not. Like I said, I'm not watching. All I see is the score. Well, Connor Brown scored. There you go, Connor Brown. Love that guy. Love me some Connor Brown. Leafs have 40 shots on goal tonight. That's silly. Yeah, they need to win this game. Yeah. Well, so Joel's excited for Austin Matthews. I'm excited for some Avs hockey. Yeah. It's another week. We'll be back. At least one of us will be here next Monday for you again. 
Maybe Joel. I might be here. I might be here. Yeah, I don't know that's yet. That's why I said at least one. I'm not counting you out yet. I'm gonna. I'll still try to wrangle you for something. Joel's happy. Le- Yankees did something. Yankees just scored. Excellent. So. Well, good for you. Um, maybe. Uh, if you are want to play high stick and you just want to tell us how handsome we are or uh, other positive things, if you have something negative to say, you can email us. If you want to tell us nice things, head over to Twitter and tell us those at Fourth Line Podcast, Facebook.com slash the Fourth Line Podcast, website, the Fourth Line Podcast.com, and our Patreon page. What just happened? Did you score? I think maybe. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Something's happening and I don't know what's going on. We should leave so I can go watch this game. All right, Joel's going to go watch the Leafs game. Uh, head over to our Patreon page where we have brand new tiers. We, pr- we should have promoted this at the start. Maybe if Joel's on next week, he can remind me to do this at the start. But we have a new tier, uh, $4 a month tier. Uh, help you get some merch. If you're like, I don't want to play high sticky and I just want to like give you money and I can get it. So we found a loophole for you. Um, so you can head over there, patreon.com slash fourth line podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Boom city.